everyone. I'm speaking to you by recording from Tucson, Arizona, where I've had a lovely late Christmas visit with my family members here. Uh, by the time I can get back to Austin, um, it will be Thursday evening, sadly. <laughs> so I've had about five or six rescheduled flights. So thank you for bearing with me. I'm recording uh, this presentation, part my part of it. And I'm really pleased, pleased that you are taking the time to listen to our team. Jane and Danny are great to work with. And of course, they're the anchors to the whole project. My background is I've been working in nonprofit fundraising communications for 35 years. And I do most all my work by hand, frankly, so I really know it well. I've worked from end to end in the state. Uh, I have an abiding interest in history, American history. I have a master's degree in American art history from UT Austin, and I have five documented American Revolutionary War ancestors. So I'm active with the Austin Colony chapter of DAR. Uh, I also served on the board of the Texas Historical Commission's Friends Group, the nonprofit arm, under former executive director Tony Turner, who's a good friend. And I've done many other things that you can see here. Um, I uh, am very tech inclined, and my father was actually transferred from California to Houston in the late 60s to work on the first manned moon mission in the Apollo program. And technology was always a part of our life at home and our outlook on life. And so I'm very comfortable with it. Uh, but more recently, 2013, I returned to Austin, and shortly thereafter, I assumed the volunteer leadership of the Nonprofit Tech Club, Austin uh, local um, nonprofit technology um, education program. And I worked with N10 on that and also TechSoup, did it for six years. And through that, I met many friends at technology, people trying to help nonprofits do great things uh, on lean budgets and more creatively. And I just had a blast. I mean, I really got well connected on that. Uh, today, I am a TechSoup ambassador. I have helped TechSoup develop a course on a nonprofit disaster preparation and recovery. And so um, I'm really a big fan of TechSoup. And if you ever have questions about that, please let me know. My talk, of course, is uh, my part of it. Old School Teaches New Lessons, where how technology is preserving a WP era icon. How it is and how it isn't. You know, technology isn't everything. It's a tool we use and we should not be afraid of it. But I do think a lot of people uh, who are afraid of it. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to do this talk to kind of uh, to show you all the tricks that we have been working on to help uh, increase our credibility and be more um, present uh, online and more professional in all ways. And I think it's working. So I've been at it for about a year now. There is a great uh, study by Brookings Institution, The New Humanism Technology Should Enhance not replace human interactions. This is a photo of several of our board members. Uh, this project would not uh, be where it is today and it would not move forward without them. So uh, again, technology isn't everything, it's an enhancement, it helps you, or you should view it that way, I hope. And from one of my favorite organizations, the National Council of Nonprofits, there are some trends that we are probably all very well aware of. These are actually national trends. First, limited resources. I think we're all tuned into that. Increased demand stemming from increased needs and awareness that each nonprofit and its board members must be vocal advocates for their nonprofits and their nonprofit mission. So I think we all definitely uh, understand and appreciate that. So that sets the stage for where we are today. Uh, my work uh, this past year has is really building on an already strong foundation. My uh, focus has been on digital tech for communication and organizational management to better inform philanthropists and partners locally, statewide, and beyond to strengthen our community, to attract new people, including younger generations who, as you know, are so active online these days. So we're trying to fit into all of those modes. 
Uh, there is a wonderful study that also informs our work and uh, this presentation, and it's from the University of Indiana Lilly Family School of Philanthropy. I've been following them for about 10 years, and I noticed them when U.S. Trust had been uh, funding research and um, on donors and what they were thinking and trends and that kind of thing. So you can get on their website and actually download this report, and I do recommend it. It's really insightful. I'm going to speak about just three things from that report, just three. There's many, many more insights there, but um, I'll speak about those and then you will understand uh, kind of why we are doing what we are doing. The first is donors expressed a greater desire for nonprofits to communicate the impact of programs and services and to be informed in more engaging and personal ways. People shifted their giving to organizations that demonstrated impact and efficiency. We all need to really be mindful of that. Um, and those engaged in communication and education, personalized donor engagement as well. They appreciate nonprofits' efforts to present the impact of donor gifts, and they plan to continue contributing to organizations with clear and consistent communication. You've got to keep people in the loop, and we are definitely working on that, I'll explain soon. Second, donors described a range of patterns in public perceptions. Overall, participants were confident that the philanthropic organizations they support would be able to make an impact with their gifts. Donors uh, attributed their confidence to prior work experience within philanthropy, but also volunteer experience at an organization. You really need to Keep that in mind. Volunteers really do matter. And personal vetting or recommendations from someone they trust and the organization's outreach with donors. So strong, compelling marketing that communicated impact. We're hearing that again again, impact, impact, and follow-up communication. These all helped uh, participants view an organization as reputable. Last in my list from the Lilly Family School of Philanthropy, participants describe adjusting to new expectations, including accepting payments digitally and changing the way they engage donors. They noted that it was important to create more engaging content, for example, by including images and videos to increase engagement. That's really where it's going, folks. We have to become more visual. Participants also saw organizations collect donor information in new ways. They witnessed and participated in efforts to collect emails, we all know about that, through websites, and even newer technologies like geofencing. Overall, the shift to virtual interactions and the need to use more digital technologies was framed as inevitable but challenging. And I think that's true for the staff, not just donors. It's true for all of us. Now, moving a bit closer to our exact experience at Atlanta Grade School Friends, appearances matter. Um, you can't help it. It's just human nature. When you meet someone for the first time, there's a good chance that your first impression will be shaped by what the other person looks like. So, even in situations where facial appearances shouldn't matter, like deciding if a defendant is guilty or innocent or choosing where to stay in an Airbnb, there are consistent advantages to having the right look. I chose Shirley Temple to illustrate this point because she was act, had an active film career during the 1930s, and that is when our school was constructed in Atlanta, Texas, and opened for uh, teaching. So she's just absolutely perfect for that. <laughs> Adore her. Now, with the visual image in mind, since we're online so much, we have a new website this past year. And this is a wonderful story. We had a 20-year-old website that was actually just sitting there doing nothing. So it was really an old format. And that did not show that we were very sophisticated at all. I thought, you know, if people get look for the website and they see this, they're going to go, they, they can't handle a big gift. They, there's no way. They are, no, they're not sophisticated enough, but they, were, they are behind there. But the fact is the website was conveying a different message. So uh, I urge everyone to 
uh, keep your website updated. It does not have to be complicated and expensive. And um, I have helped nonprofits with this very problem before. <laughs> so uh, we have added certainly a new format. We added the uh, org uh, in our title there, our, our URL, instead of .com. We have donor and partner thanks. We have our, we always had our history and mission, but we now have also our future plans. We have more historic photos. We have a sign up form for MailChimp and we installed QGIVE online gift processing, which allows people to donate right from the website straight to our bank. It's very secure and I love QGIVE. So I've done several webinars for them actually. So uh, if you ever need help with that, please let me know. Chris Wood is a first grade alumnus of Atlanta Miller Grade School. I was shocked. I actually contacted him and I thought, you know, maybe I could just get on there and fix this website myself. But he wrote back and said, let's do a call. So we did a video call on a Saturday and he said, I went to school there. I love that place. And uh, he loved Atlanta. And so he out just out of the blue donated his services to create this website and since then now we work together to update the contents and that does happen fairly often <laughs> so we are in contact a lot i really really like him and if anyone wants the email to chris wood at handsome web he's up in arlington just let me know you can email me anytime i'm happy to share it another really uh important critical online infrastructure activity that we undertook. We uh, claimed our GuideStar profile. As you probably know, GuideStar merged with Candid. GuideStar for decades has been uploading every nonprofit tax return in the United States. And so whether you like it or not, your profile is on there if you're a nonprofit. I mean, you, your tax returns are on there. And I, I have heard a lot of people who do not like it. But you don't have uh, a choice, really. Uh, if you're a nonprofit, legally, you have to be transparent. So that is what we've got. So the idea is to claim your uh, free profile and flesh it out, just share more information. You don't have to share everything, but you can add photos, links to videos, annual reports, uh, just list your board. And uh, the more you add, the higher the level seal that you secure. And gold is very solid for that. We actually just secured the 2023 gold seal. And uh, we also um, um, secured um, the top rated seal from great nonprofits. We're working on getting the 2023 seal on that now. But basically, these tie together these two platforms. I, that's why I put them together. They're free. The cost is really just your time. You need to take the time to flesh that profile out. Because again, donors and professional advisors and the general public, are they legit? Are they professional? Do they have an organization? Um, we're working on new bylaws now. A lot of people want to know that you operate under bylaws. And uh, that is uh, just our world today. People don't trust as much. So these platforms really will help you with that. Uh, it should be an easy thing for uh, board members and volunteers to just get on great nonprofits and give a, give a review. It's very simple. And again, they are linked to one another so you can get to great nonprofits from your GuideStar profile. But I, I know some people block, well, people already know what I think, but they don't really. What uh, great nonprofits is good for is not the insiders who know so much as it is the outsiders wanting to get engaged. Uh, not just donors, partners, you know, do people like this place? Uh, that kind of a thing. So put your uh, board members and volunteers to work. Just tell them, write a review, get that seal. It really goes a long way. And it also just feels good. It's like they don't have to give money. They can just write a review. It's great. Social media, we all know we have to get on there with COVID. Everybody was on social media and uh, it became even more important than it already was. So um, through social media, of course, you're nurturing and building your community, attracting new people. But also it's a fact that social media now has become a leading way that people research your nonprofit to see if it's doing good work and if they like what they see. And... Um, 
if you don't post, I have literally heard this from donors like, well, they haven't posted in, you know, weeks. They're not doing anything. Well, they may be too busy to be posting. Um, you kind of don't have a choice. I think, though, it's manageable. Just post once a week. Let people know what you're doing. Post a picture. That's it. You're fine. You just need to look like you're alive and active, and that message will carry through. But if you don't post and it looks like it's like months or years, you haven't put anything on, it's dangerous, I would say, for the image that you will have online. Uh, also, make sure your URL or your website address is clear. For instance, on Facebook, we had a great Facebook page, but it was here the address was something like facebook.com forward slash profile forward slash x y one two seven nine three so uh this fall last fall we got on there and claimed atlanta grade school friends so it's facebook.com forward slash atlanta grade school friends that makes sense again it's not the ins insiders knew how to get to us but it's the outsiders that need to peek in and they can't because it's like, why do they have that big number on there? That's they don't realize that not everybody's a technologist. So, and I would say also just focus on platforms that make sense and just don't get too many of them. Don't get shiny object syndrome, as I've heard it called by the nonprofit technology network. Uh, here are some statistics that might guide you in your choice. Uh, Facebook, number one, still number one. Uh, YouTube. And where are we with Atlanta grade school friends? We are on Facebook and YouTube. If you go down the list, Instagram is really big and it's owned by Facebook. So I think if I was advising, you know, Atlanta grade school friends, which I am, <laughs> I would say if we wanted another platform, it'd be Instagram. I wouldn't uh, adopt TikTok because of the Chinese government surveillance that is possible. If you do get involved, uh, with TikTok. Uh, you can also look at YouTube. If you like that TikTok format, look at cons and consider YouTube shorts, little quick videos that are kind of an alternative to TikTok. And uh, I think we might do that at some point uh, to give people a flavor of just, hey, this is going on right now, you know, not less of a formal video. But anyway, this is kind of how it's stacking up. So choose wisely, I would say. Now, Google is uh, unavoidable, I think, especially in the nonprofit sector. I mean, it controls 92% of the search market. It's really the best search engine. It's the best researcher, research tool that I use. I love it. Uh, if you get a free Gmail account, though, you then get access to a suite of apps, depending on what you're doing. Uh, you make a choice. Google Maps, YouTube. We use that. Google Drive, we use that and more. If you're remote working or you have your volunteers are moving around all over the place, then, um, you know, remote working is facilitated by, you know, say Google Drive. You can really communicate well that way. And all my documents that I'm working on go up in Google Drive so our core volunteer team can access them. And they're also secure up in Google Drive. So, um, I really recommend that highly, especially from my TechSoup disaster prep program. I've talked to so many nonprofits that lost all their hard copy documents in major massive flooding. And I just would say if you can scan and put them up into the cloud, um, whatever, just put them in the cloud, you know, get them off your hard drives because your computers can be destroyed. They can be just be stolen. There can be a fire. Doesn't matter the disaster, it, they happen. So be prepared and you can just keep operating from a re remote location if you've experienced a disaster. So that is, uh, all this is very cost effective with Google. Uh, Google Maps, I recently, for another nonprofit where I just volunteer, uploaded a suite of photos three weeks ago and they email me, oh, you've had so many views on your photos. Well, Yesterday, I got a note, oh, 3,000 people have viewed your photos that you put. I mean, it, the power of that platform is unbelievable. So communicate what you're doing with photos you think are safe and good to represent you. And um, I think Google Maps is an area where we all need to expand. So we'll, we'll see about that. But be watching. Also, back to word of mouth, just 
Consumers trust their friends. Word of mouth is the most valuable source of marketing, not ads. 92% of consumers, that includes donors, believe uh, suggestions from friends and family more than they do advertising. So if you're putting a lot of energy into advertising, you might just kind of work on instead on your testimonials and reviews using either great nonprofits or on WordPress. If you've got a WordPress site, a lot of times they, there are widgets or plugins you can add where you can add testimonials right on your website. People can email them to you. It's wonderful, but it is so helpful for the public to know what people really think that have been involved or visited your site and your nonprofit. Also, I'm sure you know this, communicating by email, but um, we uh, set up a MailChimp account. There are great platforms out there, Constant Contact, Eye Contact. I've used all of those, but uh, regular communication. We have a monthly newsletter. We look professional, I hope, I think. <laughs> and uh, please join our list if you'd like. But basically, we're sharing information online like never before, so that we can reach people, not just in the community, but outside. People in other, all across Texas, people in other states. Um, they're, you know, they're not all in Atlanta, Texas, town of 5,000. And uh, this just helps it, um, helps our, our communication to be greatly improved. But also, we found the past year that we've actually collected a lot of history. We've documented our activities. We have really got now an archive going of information about Atlanta grade school friends and about Atlanta Miller grade school. So I really um, am excited about that. So we have kind of a legacy there. So it's, it's actually a historical tool, <laughs> I would say. And of course, tell your story visually. I've said that already. There's our channel. Please visit. Check out our videos. At the end of this presentation, we have a two-minute video that uh, Danny and I put together that uh, shows you how they found the school, the volunteers found the school in horrible repair, how construction went on and cleanup and all that, and then what's been going on more recently. So we'll play that. It's really lovely, and it is on our YouTube channel. But I wanted to say, don't get too... Uh, intimidated by a video. You know, I've created videos um, and you'll see them on there with Microsoft PowerPoint. I just downloaded the PowerPoint after I put, you know, timing in the midst of it, uploaded it right to YouTube and YouTube has an uh, audio library of sounds of great music and just sounds. And <laughs> so you can kind of search and say, I need uh, music that fits two minutes and 11 seconds, and it'll give you what's available, more or less. And uh, you can attach it to that video and then publish it on YouTube. So I use also Adobe Creative Cloud. I like how you can create um, video with still images. It's basically you upload that and the transitions between the slides and the format that you choose are the movement and the video. And I upload those to YouTube. It's really a great platform. And uh, this video I am doing with uh, Vimeo. So I've done that. I did a educational course for University of the Incarnate Word and I use Vimeo, so I got to know it pretty well. So with a free Gmail account, you can set up a YouTube account, but we have got to all be more visual and use video more, as this quote suggests. It's the most engaging content type online. If you follow Facebook over the years, I've watched how it's evolved, and you can really see that transi transition is happening. So take the time to do video. If you need help, I'm happy to point you in the right direction. Now, low tech, I call this low tech, high tech. Vistaprint and Avery, you don't think of them as tech companies, but the truth is they are. Uh, this is a mailer we sent out to our new 1500 person uh, mailing list. Really a beautiful piece. And I designed it all online, downloaded a PDF, shared it with the home team, got approval, and they actually mailed it for us for a very modest cost. 
I didn't have to do any bulk mailing. And we checked our list against the UPS. They did it in-house. So, oh, boy, was that really helpful. So, uh, Avery, you can see our threefold brochure. I wish you were there in person um, to, <laughs> to receive copies that we plan to bring with us for our talk. But um, basically, I designed it on there with a great volunteer, Cindy Chambly, who's wonderful and helps me so much. And um, we worked together on this. I was able to, once we finalized the design, I was able to download it in a format that our local Atlanta print house, Bob's Printing, uh, could print right from the file. So, uh, oh, it was so convenient. I have to say, customer service was really good with these platforms. I think they're high tech, personally, <laughs> but you don't hear about that often. And the other thing, just closing thought, if we all learn Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, just learn the capabilities of these platforms, really, as they've evolved over time, we would hardly need anything else. And we wouldn't need a lot of consultants to hire to do things. We could do so much more. It's just amazing. And so I recommend that uh, if you join TechSoup, uh, they do have Microsoft 365. They have a real strong partnership with Microsoft and they have a nonprofit program with really a deep discount on that. And I recommend that. And there are educational programs as well that dovetail, but just take the time to learn. You know, we just all need to do that and you'll be much better off. Other fun tools, I mentioned Issue. Uh, we've uploaded our, this slide presentation is on Issue. I can send you that link. Uh, we have uploaded a annual report for last year, a PDF. Basically, you upload a PDF file of a document and it will convert it to a magazine format. So online on an iPad, on an iPhone or other smartphone, you can read it and just flip through it digitally. It's really, great looking. I really like it a lot. Also, uh, it's odd, perhaps, that we have a Yelp uh, review. I created a, plat a profile because I'm a member of the Yelp Elite Squad in Austin. I've been doing reviews of small businesses for about seven years. And um, basically, you can visit Atlanta Miller Grade School in person by appointment. And so that is what I put in the review. You can't just show, you can drive by, but you can't really tour it or anything. So, uh, but I put that all in there and I upload a lot of photos and we have a really great profile. It helps with our search and people go, oh, look, it's amazing how many people get on there. Last year I had 70,000 people were helped by my photos and reviews on Yelp. So I really do knew the power of that platform. <laughs> I was just floored. Uh, so I would say use it. What the heck? Help the public find you. And sometimes they're finding you on weird things. Like they're not looking um, just on, maybe they might just be looking on Google Maps and looking at Google reviews are real powerful. But Yelp, they might be on that. You never know. It's all helpful. Adobe Creative Cloud. We've created a couple of logos that we use in our materials. Uh, In-frame photo app. They enhance photos in some really great ways, and they really help you if you're working on Instagram. Occasionally on my page, I post Instagram photos, and they have to be square pretty much. Not always, but it helps. And we joined TechSoup. Again, I'm a TechSoup ambassador. Happy to help if you have questions about that. Technology is an everything. In closing, uh, we reviewed our case for support. We kind of redid the whole thing. We now have a little booklet. We're just waiting for our budget for the restoration costs. So we'll have that later bound at Bob's Printing, probably right there in Atlanta. Uh, we reorganized and kind of put ourselves into phases of development. So they're easy to understand by potential partners. We create a long range plan. People want to know that you're really thinking ahead and planning and that you kind of come through some steps and you're moving forward in logical ways. We just did a bullet point plan. It's very simple, but it's right to the point. We also hired a wonderful leading Texas architect, Stan Graves of Architexas. And I can't say enough about how great he is and the confidence that he will lend, is lending, I would say now, to our community, uh, our partner in um, 
partners and our donors, potential donors. So there you go. Also, here's a picture of Jan last year that I took at the school in the auditorium. We've been talking to the community. We've been trying to envision new facility uses because we have a school with multiple classrooms and an auditorium. And uh, they might we might like to offer uh, space for classes, workforce training, all kinds of things are possible. Art classes, you know, whatever. Meditation, you never know. So uh, we're asking about that. There will be a dedicated uh, historic exhibit in the building, but that still leaves a lot of classrooms. So stay tuned. We joined the chamber. We also did snail mail with Excel create, uh, I did this by hand, 1,500 plus lists so we can mail people. People get kind of crazy after COVID, especially uh, for being online so much. And so we're trying to be tech, tech, low tech and high tech, I would say. So we're still going to be mailing. We still think that's important. And I, I just can't under, uh, understate that. So we're, we're covering all bases. We think we're, empo- we're poised for a very exciting year this year. Please join our MailChimp list. And I would not be doing my job if I didn't say donations are welcome anytime. And you can make them online. (laughs) So visit us online. You can email me anytime. I'm the one managing that Gmail and I send them off to Danny or Jane or whoever. Our Facebook uh, handle is there and YouTube as well. We'd love to have you visit all those places and visit with us. If I was there in person, I could answer questions. I apologize. But if you have any for me specifically, please just email me anytime. It's no problem at all.